like to invite the president of Guyana to deliver his speech. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to be joining this high-level climate vulnerable forum. Our planet is ailing. Human activity continues to pollute our land and contaminate our waterways. While heat trapping greenhouse gases are warming the planet, global temperatures are fast approaching a doomsday scenario. Our planet, in turn, is revolting. Rising sea levels and extreme weather events are among its most rebellious eruptions. For climate vulnerable states, particularly small island developing and low-lying coastal states, the adverse effects of climate change are inflicting death, destruction, and pain. But even worse is threatening our very existence. Climate vulnerable states can be viewed through this lens, which emphasizes our vulnerabilities, but we can also be viewed through another lens, one which highlights our ambitions. Small island developing and low-lying coastal states are not lacking in ambition. Many of us are already punching above our weight in response to the climate crisis. We are the least contributors to climate change, yet we are making impactful contributions to mitigating the adverse effects of climate change. Through the ecosystem and climate services which our forests provide and through the decarbonization of our economies. No, we are not lacking in ambition. What constrains us is our ability to realize our ambitions. The darker Glasgow Declaration, which we'll adopt today, is an unambiguous manifestation of our commitment to realize those ambitions. However, we cannot do so given the present barriers which obstruct and constrain our efforts. If these barriers persist, then they will derail our actionable timeline in achieving not only ours, but the global climate change targets. This is why we have called for all the measures which are incorporated in the declaration, including the Climate Emergency Pact and helping with climate prosperity plans to be implemented. In Guyana, we have experience of climate prosperity plans dating back in 2009, when we were among the first developing countries to formulate a low carbon development strategy. Just last week, we launched a consultative process aimed at expanding our low carbon development strategy. This strategy, when finalized, will articulate our vision to 2030. Guyana will decarbonize its economy and will invest in a suite of low carbon opportunities and jobs while maintaining our standing forest, which is almost as big as England and Scotland combined. Our expansive forests are a global asset and store more than 20 gigatons of carbon. They preserve priceless biodiversity and provide sustainable livelihoods for our people. We'll continue to adopt an inclusive approach to the sustainable management of our forests, biodiversity, and freshwater supplies. We will slash emissions further by transitioning towards cleaner sources of energy. Yes, we are vulnerable, but we are not helpless or without hope. We are taking decisive action to ramp up and realize these ambitions. 
but without the critical support, financial and technological, our best and noblest of ambitions will all flounder. The Glasgow DACA Declaration is a proclamation of our commitment to being impactful in ending the climate crisis. I welcome it and endorse it. On a ending note, Madam Chair, over the last two days, I've heard various numbers being announced in terms of the 100 billion pledge. And I want to sound a danger with the manipulation of these numbers in a $100 billion pledge. What we are seeing is actually a reclassification of development financing that was already there, many of which had a very small component to deal with climate change, maybe a school with a solar system to produce the water, but now the entire loan as is classified, or the entire grant is classified as part of that $100 billion. That is the sense we are having, and we must guard against this. That those resources were never meant to be part of the $100 billion pledge. So there needs to be accountability. There needs to be transparency, and there needs to be a proper system that speak directly to the pledges, where the pledges are coming from, and exactly the time frame that those pledges came in. With these words, I thank you sincerely, and I say to all of us, let us continue to battle strong. Let us continue to be hopeful, and hopefully the message will be heard. Thank you.